Hi, I'm Mac McCarthy, and I help people with their breakups. And today, I have another breakup story to share. And if you have a breakup story you want to share, please visit writemac.com. The link's down below. Send your story, and I could give you my take in a YouTube video just like this. If you like this video, then like it. If you don't like it, that's just fine. If you have a comment to help the individual out, put it down below. If you'd like to book a live coaching session with myself to unpack your breakup story, your breakup problems, your breakup issues, get to the bottom of it, get some clarity, and get some useful and helpful information moving forward, which I guarantee, if not, I'll give you your money back in the coaching session. Otherwise, subscribe if you want to be updated on all the live streams that drop, which are every other day or so. So let's get into the story. Hi, Mac. Love your videos as they are pretty straightforward. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. My ex and I dated for a year and then split up, got back together roughly nine months later, and then he moved in with me a few months later. So dated for a year, then split up. It's always funny to me when someone says, oh, I'm dating someone. I, when, I, when I think about dating someone, I don't think it's official. Does that make sense? It's, dating someone to me is, is pre-boyfriend, girlfriend, pre-partner. But some people look at it different. Got back together roughly nine months later. My question would be, what was the problem? And uh, how did you get back together nine months later? That's, that's quite a length of time to realize that you still were in each other. He rented his house out to his mom. We lived together for almost two years. Our relationship was pretty great for the most part till the end when it wasn't. Well, I'd ask, in that year that you dated and then nine months later when you got back together, what was different? So I've been having my own issues mentally and kind of just shut myself down from him, I guess. Well, that's one of those things where uh, you probably need to work on yourself as an individual and probably doing that would take you being an individual for a little while, not being in a relationship. You realizing that you had uh, mental issues is the first step, right? He asked me one night why I wasn't initiating things romantically anymore and I just said I didn't realize that I hadn't been in a while. Um, so you're just saying that you guys are going through the motions. It's a little bit monotonous, boring. Uh, in these kind of cases, sometimes people want someone to blame, but both people should be responsible when a relationship gets monotonous, when it gets boring. And someone usually likes to blame the other person, uh, but both people have a stake or a role in it. Uh, the idea that one just accepts it as normal, I hear this a lot. Uh, well, that's just how relationships are and that, you know, the honeymoon, honeymoon phase ends, which there's some truth to that. But if you accept it and you embrace it, you're going to make it uh, more prevalent. If you look at it as something that you want to fix, something that you want to work on, uh, well, then you probably are, right? And there are ways to work on that, obviously. A good book on that is Mating in Captivity. I forgot the lady's name. Like a day or two later, we had a heated discussion where he told me he felt like I made him feel like a renter and not an equal partner because I called the house my house. So this is where language gets involved, and this is probably something that had been bothering him for a little bit of time. Uh, I wouldn't be overly upset with him. He's telling you that he doesn't like the use of those words. Now, if that's in lieu of the idea that you guys are lacking intimacy, well, then this, this could just be another dart he's throwing, but the real problem is the lack of intimacy. Of course, that was in the middle of us making dinner, and I was in a hurry to get out the door to take my son to his sport. So when he explained his side of how he felt, I told him that I understood that. I never looked at it that way, and I thought it was done. So it's important to listen to him in this case and to respond that you do understand, and you probably were saying it unconsciously, and he, he did the right thing by telling you, hey, it, it kind of bothers me. So I left to take my son to his sport and did not bring it back up when I got home. Apparently, he was upset that I did not bring it back up. So he wasn't clear on things. You aren't a mind reader. So again, you looked at it, not a big deal. I understand. He looked at it like, no, it is a big deal. My question would be, is he making a big deal out of this because the intimacy is lacking? So sometimes there's small problems that people let go because the relationship as a whole are pretty, is pretty good. And then there's sometimes when someone uses some small issue or like, you know, this guy saying that you call it your house. That's actually an issue he has with himself. That's an insecurity that he's living in your house under your roof and he has to accept that. And do you, here's the question. Do you look at it as your house? 
If you do, then that would be the proper way to say it. Do you feel bad when you say that? So I left to take my, I'm sorry, the next night he was on the, apparently he was upset that I did not bring it back up. The next night he was on the phone with his mom who apparently told him that she found a place to buy on contract and that she would not be renting his house out starting the next month, which was like two weeks away. Wow, renting a house to your mom just sounds a little, I'm not judging, charging your mom rent for your house. Hmm, interesting. Well, I mean, if it works for his mom and it works for him, that's fine. All I heard of the conversation was her saying that she did not want to put him in a bind. We never really got a chance to talk about it. But, I, I mean, what would be the problem with him renting to someone else besides his mom would be my question. Problem solved about it, I guess. But then the next day he came home from work as I was walking out the door. When I went in to give him a kiss, hello, he said, I'm moving out. Wow. So that came out of nowhere. Anytime there's a shocking breakup or declaration like that, it can be a bit traumatic. And so this is, these are tougher breakups when you don't see them coming. It's like a car accident. Um, of course, after this, I kind of got cold because I wasn't sure how to feel or react. So I just played it cold for a couple of days and he just sat around, just sit around on his phone like he wanted to talk, but never say anything until he, I went to bed. He kind of talked to me a little bit for a couple of days in a row, basically just telling me things like he didn't think that we were compatible because we didn't have the same goals or things that he thought that he was upset with me about that he never brought up before. Well, that's a compelling good reason to break up that your goals don't line up and that you're not compatible. Whether you agree with that or not is up to you. Um, specifically, what areas are those? And is this coming out of nowhere for you? My question, he wanted to continue living with me for the next month and a half while his mom was going to move and get settled into her place. Well, I mean, that's convenient for him. For him to drop the bomb on you like this and then go, I'd still like to live here for a month and a half. Um, and I told him there was no point that if we were over, I didn't see the point of him staying here that long. And I don't blame you. Um, but this is where I'm wondering if he was using this as a tactic Sometimes guys and women will go, when they abruptly say, I'm moving out, it's a strategy to get your attention. And sometimes they're hoping that you beg and plead and, you know, get down on your knees and say, sorry, I'm, I'm being exaggerated, but you know what I mean? And if you don't react that way, it's almost like ultimatums. It's one of those things where they're like, oh shit, I thought she was going to, you know, be sorry and, and really do and say what, what I was hoping for. And then you kind of responded like, well, I, I didn't know you felt that way, but I'm not gonna fight you on it. Then he would tell me that he didn't know if he had feelings for me anymore, that sometimes he loved me, but other times he wasn't sure if he loved me. Well, that's his problem, not yours. And if you're in a committed relationship and you're pretty clear that you'd love him, these are difficult words to hear. He was kind of back and forth all over the board. Then he finally shut down and kept quiet and I began to panic and probably made all the wrong moves trying to convince him that we would work things out. So now, to me, the way he's playing this and where he's going with it and the idea that he announces that he's going to move out but not till six weeks away um, and then he's being kind of cold and distanced, he's not sure about this decision and he really does want you to act this way to, to show how much you care about him. In the end, I finally gave in and just said that he just needed to move out within a reasonable amount of time because I didn't see a point of us continuing like we were. Good for you. Good for you. He began moving things out while I was at work and left his keys on the table on Thanksgiving Day while I was still at work. I know it doesn't sound timely with Thanksgiving, but it has to happen at some point. So sometimes we put a lot of weight on the day. I mean, you know, I've been in a breakup before that's two days before your birthday. It's going to happen anyways, right? Um, I didn't talk to him for a week after that until I messaged him to see how he was and he was rude and snappy about one of my social media posts saying that I was out drinking with other dudes a day after he moved out. Well, that's your prerogative. And what it sounds like to me is he's, he's covertly, he's breaking up with you, but at the same time, hoping that you, you kind of are still interested in him. You kind of still owe him something and you don't. He announced he was going to break up with you. He announced that he, was, think he wasn't compatible with you. He left his keys on the table. He moved out. You're allowed to go out drinking with other guys. I told him that 
That was not true. I was at home and it was my son's friend who I had one beer with because he came to help me move furniture. Again, you're, you're explaining yourself to him, which gives him some power in the situation, and you don't need to. His response back was that I would be pissed off too. He was out drinking with other women. Well, that, that's tit for tat, and that's his way of trying to get back at you. It's vengeful. It's vindictive. And it says something about his character. I said I probably would be, but even if he were to had, I had no right to be upset as he left me. True. Very true. I never received a response back from that. So two days later, I deleted him and blocked him on all social media. I blocked him two weeks later as I realized it was petty. Although, good, I mean, I don't find it petty at all if your communication is negative, 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 and he's putting you on your back heel as far as what you're doing and who you're doing it with. So I don't find it petty at all because it's going to be a nuisance. It's going to be annoying. And if you got to answer to him what you're doing while you're single, how does that serve you moving forward? Although we are not friends on any social media accounts and don't really see each other or have mutual friends that we both talk to, it's now been three months and there has been no contact in either direction. A friend of mine told me he still has all of our pictures up on his Facebook. Yesterday on my way home from work, I seen him for the first time riding his new Harley. I taught him how to ride the first summer he lived with me as I have my own. I don't know if he's seen me or not, but my heart sank to my stomach and I realized I still care for him a lot. Well, that's natural. You're human. Don't fight it. Feel it. Deal with it. Don't push it away. But you can somehow neutralize that by receiving it and saying, we had a good moment. I helped him learn how to ride that bike. I've been doing things that you, that you say to do recently, like going to the gym and trying to work on myself. I've lost 20 pounds and feel really good about myself, but he's still in the back of my mind every day. Again, this is natural. You live together. You had a serious relationship. You need time to heal, and you're doing the best you can right now, it sounds like. At this point, I'm not... And, you, and to be fair, you didn't over the top when he said it's not compatible, when he said you wanted to move out. You didn't create a drama fest. You wanted him to stay, but then when he said no, you, you accepted it. At this point, I'm not sure where to turn from here. If I should make contact, as I still have a shirt that he asked for before he left, but was in storage on my motorcycle, and as I couldn't get it, as my parents were out of state at the time. Well, returning a shirt as a way to make contact with an individual, just go into that with good intentions that if he's not receptive to getting back together or going out for lunch or dinner, you, you just give him a shirt back, right? So sometimes like, the thing is, if you're gonna revisit things with someone, you need to be in a really good place and you need to be okay with the idea that they could say no to you. If you're not okay, you're nervous, you're scared, I would continue to be in no contact because you're going to be extremely sensitive if that person says no. So I guess I'm wondering, should I use that as a way to contact him or should I just forget about it? Um, if you want to return the shirt and the shirt is special to him or, or somehow sentimental, it's a, it's a shirt he really wants, you can say, hey, I have, your, I have your shirt. If you're going to use it as a way to get in contact with him to go out, I, I, I don't like that idea. Um, you know, I would just come out and be honest and go, Hey, it's been a while. Let's go get lunch or let's go get dinner. And if you're going to re, if you're going to regenerate this thing, regenerate this thing, it would be from the bottom. It would be from zero and it would be from just going out and enjoying each other's company. Using the shirt, like I said, if you use the shirt to, as a thing, he'll probably know what that's about. And if he makes a negative snipe, which he it seems like he kind of can be a little bit like that, it's going to hurt you. So you could definitely call him up and say, hey, I have your shirt. Would you like me to send it over? Or I was just thinking, let's just get lunch and catch up. Now, the danger in that being, if he says no or, you know, I don't think it's a good time or he says something rude, it's going to hurt you and bring you down to ground zero. That's the elephant in the room. If you, think you, if you believe you can accept that as a possibility, then go ahead and do it. If you believe you can be neutral with that idea, in other words, if you're going to contact the individual and you can go into it without high expectations, then do it. If you feel like, oh, if he says that to me, I'm going to be really hurt and upset, then just send him the shirt in the mail. And then when he, get, and then when he gets the shirt, maybe he'll, he'll say thank you. I really care for him and ultimately I would like to fix things and get back together. Well, 
if the idea that you have different goals and you're not compatible, how are you going to fix that? The only way you fix that is he realizes he was wrong in that moment. But if he has that in his head, I'm not sure you're going to talk him out of that. One thing that scares me that, I mean, and if you, if you want to fully unpack this in a live coaching session with myself, I would highly recommend that you go through those things with me so that you can be honest with yourself and go, maybe we weren't uh, incompatible. Maybe it was more than that. If you're having trouble accepting that as an answer, we need to unpack that. One thing that scares me that I did say before he left was that he was upset that I had not bonded with his daughter. Well, that's a big issue. And if you feel like, again, here's the thing. When someone accuses you of something, do you agree? Do you feel it's true? Do you feel it's valid? You do not want to apologize or backstep when you don't agree with something because it will be disingenuine and it'll be dishonest and people can, can read that. He only has her on the weekends during the school year and during the week in the, in the summer. From all the videos that I watch, it said to let her come to me on, on her own time. His daughter is eight, almost nine. Well, if you didn't do anything bad and you did your best and you had good intentions, I think you should be okay. If you made an effort that you're happy with, then you should be okay. If he said that at the end, when it was a breakup, that's his fault for not saying something earlier. And I'm sure he could have somehow made some more of an effort to have you more involved. If your approach was, let me stand back and not be forceful, I don't think that's a bad thing because eight or nine is a very sensitive age. And so just being present like I said, leading with good intentions, I don't think you can do anything wrong with that. The worst part of our relationship was being unable to have good communication when things were bothering either one of us. Well, it sounds like he held things in, held things in, and then when he let them out, it was like a, it was fireworks. And that's not your fault specifically. That could be the way he conveys feelings and how he's done it in the past. And somehow it feels like when he says something and he's upset about it, it's... It, you can't say sorry enough or you can't make it right. He wants to continue on with it. People like that are extremely hard to communicate with them. It's called being stubborn. And they also, they also don't seek a solution. They like to chew on the problem. And that's really, really difficult to get forward with someone like that. But ultimately, we had a really good relationship and always got along pretty well, or so I thought. Well, that's a reflection of you also. And right now, he made the choice to leave, and he, made, he had his reasons, and he has to realize during the no-contact situation that he made a mistake, and that would be the best possible situation for you. That being said, if you did want to contact him, just be aware that he could bring you down to uh, ground zero again. And like I said, if you, you've had a pretty significant relationship with a lot of twists and turns, you might want to do a live coaching session before you make a decision on this. I really didn't want to be the first want to make contact as I really thought that he would come back to me. I told him before he left that I want to fix things, but he moved on and that was the end of it. Well, the fact that you left it with, I want to fix things, I'm positive, I still have feelings for you. He knows that, the ball's in his court, and if it's ideal for him to come back to you, then I would stay in no contact and I would continue to work on yourself. If you lost 20 pounds already, kudos, good for you. That feels great. And you're dealing with things right now. And the idea that uh, you're strong and you're accepting of his wishes, that also works in your favor. That's attractive. I really didn't want to be the first. Uh, I told him before he left that I wanted to fix things. Did I ruin it all together by doing that? To, or do you think there's still a chance that this can be fixed? Well, I don't know if there's a chance that this could be fixed or not. It's one of those things that his statement is, let, let, let's just go back. You aren't compatible, you don't have the same goals, and you didn't make enough of an effort with his daughter. Whether that's true or not to you, it's true to him, and you got to give him the benefit of the doubt if that's what he felt. Now, that being said, I don't know how you fix those problems unless you get really specific on each one. And he has to believe that you could fix them. He has to be the one to come back and make that decision. And I don't think you calling him up and saying you have a shirt is going to switch the tides anytime soon. That being said, if you want to go for it, just know the consequences. If so, how would I go about it? Or do I continue on with my life and leave him alone? I would say continue working on yourself. You know, read some good books. The, I, I believe The Tactical Guide to Men by Sean Smith is a good one. Um, keep working out, keep exercising, keep journaling, get in touch with what you really want in your life. 
Give it a little bit more time. You didn't mention how long you've been in no contact, but he needs to realize that he misses you and he needs to realize your value without you telling him. I'm sorry, this is a long, I tried to sum it up for you. No, this story was written well and specific and I'm happy that I could help you with it. So I hope that helps you. If you'd like to visit rightmac.com and book a live coaching session, that's also available. Thank you for supporting the channel.